Today's Grandmaster is Lutz Espich, and he was born in Greitz in East Germany, when East Germany was still a nation, uh, on January 5th, 1949. That makes him 72 years old today. <laughs> He was the champion of East Germany three times. He was first place at Lublin, 1970, at Varna in 1976, and 1983. All right, so Wolfgang Ullmann was born in Dresden, March 29th, 1935. He died earlier this year. I don't know if you remember seeing all the blurbs on chess.com about Ullmann. He died August 24th, um, 2020, at the age of 85. Ullmann was one of the greats. He was an eight-time East German champion. He uh, qualified for the candidates' matches in um, 1971. He was eliminated by Bent Larson, who in turn was eliminated by um, Bobby Fischer. But uh, Ullmann was a noted authority on the French defense. He played it almost exclusively against pawn e4. If Fischer played Ullmann and Fisher had white, you knew that it was going to be a French defense because <laughs> Bobby always played E4, and Ullmann always played the French. And um, he wrote a book, by the way, entitled Winning with the French back in 1995. All right, but uh, C4 was played by Wolfgang Ullmann as white. And this, of course, is the English opening Knight f6 is the Anglo-Indian defense. Queen's knight variation. d6. And with d4, we transpose to one of my favorite defenses, the old Indian defense. All right, uh, Queen's knight to d7 is the Duskotimirsky variation, named for Fedor Duskotimirsky who lived from 25 September 1881 to 5 November 1965. He was um, a Russian and then Soviet Ukrainian chess champion. He was a four-time winner of the Kiev Championship, and he actually reached a peak ranking of 13th in the world in February 1911. All right, so we have Duskotomirsky's variation with Queen's Knight to d7 here. And after Knight f3, we have the two knights variation. e5, e4, bishop e7, bishop e2, both sides castle. c6 brings us to the main line. And bishop e3 is the final move from the opening book that's played here. a6, queen c2. The most common line is d5, whereupon black captures with his c-man, white recaptures with his c-man, b5 is played, Knight d2, knight b6, pawn a4, pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, knight takes knight, rook takes knight. Bishop d7 hitting the rook who retreats to a3, and the pawn marches forward to a5. That line not followed in today's game. Instead, queen c2. Queen c7, and here actually rook e8 is the most frequently played. b4, king's rook to d1 is the most popular at this juncture. Rook e8, rook fd1, 
and pawn takes d4. Um, since that time, bishop f8 has been played several times. But pawn takes pawn here. Knight takes pawn. Bishop to f8. Knight f5. Knight to e5. Bishop to g5. Bishop takes knight. Pawn takes bishop. Bishop e7 defending the knight. And he played rook to d2. Perhaps he's intending to double the rooks, although it would be sensible to bring this rook into action right away. Um, he played knight to d5, an interesting move. It's a swivel maneuver. However, um, the point is if you take with the pawn, I get your bishop and hit your rook. But black can challenge the center with pawn to b5. And if he plays bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop, pawn takes pawn, pawn uh, c man takes the pawn. And you've got a lot of pressure across here. At least equal for black, I would suppose. Knight d5, still an interesting move. This is undefended. Bishop takes, and now instead of the knight re retreating in a normal swivel maneuver, he says, I'm going to take your knight. Bishop takes here and hits the queen. I can still take the bishop because it is check. I don't have to worry about my queen being captured when you're in check. You've got to get out of check. Them's the rules. King f1, queen b6, bishop c5 hitting him again. Queen c7. And white has got a slight advantage and is not interested in offering a repetition. So he played rook takes e2. However, after bishop d6 hitting the queen, if black repeats, then play this capture. And you've got a nice super attack on this knight. Seems advantageous for white. Now this is undefended, so maybe black can hit here and here. That's a fork. Oh, no, because this x-rays, doesn't it? So you'd have to take here. Okay, that removes the defender. This is now renewed. Just double the rooks. Interesting game there. All right, well, white went ahead and captured on e2 immediately. And give this move a double exclam, guys. Wow, what a move. What a move this is. Moving your knight right into harm's way. And the point is, uh, white played g3 because if you take this um, knight, <laughs> well, you're threatening checkmate here. And so he's compelled to move to e4, not rook takes rook check, followed by rook takes rook, where now... There's no way to get out of the mate. Well, I guess you could block with your bishop. But the queen's the queen's undefended. The pawn on f2 is therefore pinned, so you could just take that bishop. And white can resign because 
that's the only way. The only way to stop mate is to give up the queen and take the rook. Any other move and you got the checkmate here. So you'd have to take the rook and give up your queen. And uh, that should win any day of the week. So, yeah, what a move was this juicy tidbit. It's interesting, though, if you look at the evaluation meter above my noggin, it shows this as being an equal position. So, <laughs> doesn't make the move any less beautiful, does it? A valuable lesson is the move does not have to be a winning move to be a beautiful move. Yeah, it's the potential of, of the uh, victory that makes this lovely. The fact that it says, I'm going to move right where you can take me, and I dare you to take me. I double dare you. Well, no such um, acquiescence here. He plays g3. B6 hits the bishop, which retreats to E3. Pawn to C5. And he played rook to D1. Now, the only way to keep the balance in this game is queen to D3. And after queen to D3, knight can take the pawn check. The king would have to go to g1, not g2, because rook a d8 hits the queen, and queen c2, knight g4, and the white king is exposed here on this long diagonal. So he'd have to go to g1, and after knight f3 check, king f1, queen e7. We actually have an equal position here. So queen d3 is necessary. Instead, he played rook d1. So this, this is a, a, a mistake. Queen d3 holds, but not, uh, not that. Uh, C takes. Bishop f4 hits the queen. Queen c6, rook d6. And there's a juicy little tactic here that uh, Lutz me missed. He played knight takes h2, which is fine. But uh, he could have played knight d2, interfering with the queen's defense of the rook. And so because of this interference, king e1 is forced because obviously king g1 allows rook takes rook. So because of that, the king is forced. Now you say, well, why can't he take the knight? Well, that's checkmate. Thanks for the game. Why can't he take it with the queen? Because that's checkmate. Thanks for the game. <laughs> He's blocked in here either way. He either, he either, if he takes with the rook, he cuts his king off this way anyhow. And if he takes with the queen, he's blocked by his own peaches. Okay, so uh, that's why the knight is better. He can't take with this rook because checkmate. Okay, <laughs> I think we've made the point. So knight to d2. Knight to d2 forces the king here. And then the uh, queen can come in for some juicies. Ah, uh, oh, Chess with o Ovi give, gifting Amir Ali a, a sub. And then after queen takes, rook takes, knight takes. And that would be advantageous for black. Okay, that didn't come to play. So king g1 here, knight back to f3 check. And... King F1 gives Black a second bite at that interference apple. 
Would you believe, guys, because here's the thing to, to recognize is that the queen is in danger. So you either have to keep the enemy king in check or move your queen to safety. So for that reason, believe it or not, it's better to move the king over here to h1, even though that's right in line with the queen. I know it goes against every fiber of our being to, to say, no, I can't do that because then he'll give me a discovered check and win my, my queen. No, he won't because after rook takes, knight takes, and after rook takes knight, all of a sudden you're ahead a whole bishop. But um, I can understand, I mean, how many, would any one of us have found King H1 here? <laughs> it looks like, no way am I going to move there. Never in a million years. So he comes back, but they, neither player actually saw the, um, the interference tactic. And so uh, white got away with it there. Rook d5. Black needs to beware now of queen to d1. Pawn to h6. Queen to d3. Knight to h2 check. And uh, king to g1. And amazingly enough... I know it's hard to believe, but once again, white is better served to move directly into the line of fire of the dark matriarch here. Well, there's no real way to dislodge this rook anyhow. And it puts the heat on this knight who would have to go to g4. After rook takes rook, check, rook takes rook, pawn to f3 hits the knight again and pushes it back to f6. And after rook d6, uh, white is still in the fight here. Black with an advantage, no doubt, but white is still in the fight. So twice the unlikely move is the best choice. Knight g4, rook d7. And this is a mistake. This is a mistake here because um, white is giving up two rooks for his queen. He ends up giving up two rooks for a queen, and that's not going to work in this situation. That is what he played. And then he jumps out of the frying pan right into the fire with this move. But he, he frankly has no good moves. Well, no, it's, it's not. You're give, first of all, Two rooks are worth 10. A queen's only worth 9. Number 2, two rooks are two pieces. A queen's only one piece. And so this is not a good um, exchange for, for white at all. Uh, he played here. This makes matters even worse after rook a to e8, threatening the fork. And the king can't get out of the fork because, you know, this will be played. <clears throat> so, but what else does he have? If he plays something like f6, knight, uh, knight takes pawn... And if he plays queen b7, the rooks double. You can isolate those rooks from each other with bishop e3. But now this pawn is going to fall. After pawn, uh, queen takes b, knight back to g4. After queen takes b4, knight takes bishop. 
after queen um, attacks the rook, rook to a3, pawn takes, rook takes, and these two rooks will prevail over the queen. So that alternative isn't any really any better. It just drags it on a lot longer. So queen d1 it was. Queen's rook to e8, threatening the fork. So he isolated the pair with bishop e3 at this juncture, which is a nice try because he can go wrong here. He can go wrong if he plays the wrong rook. If he captures with the wrong rook, he can go wrong. So let he captured with the correct rook, but let's first show why this capture does not work. If you capture with the second rank rook after pawn takes rook, pawn to h5, defending the now threatened knight, queen a4 attacking the rook, rook takes the e-man, queen takes the b-man on b4, rook takes the g-man with check, king to h1, rook h3, king g1, king h7, queen takes the b-man on b6, h4, queen d6, and after rook g3 check h1, black has nothing better because white now has a passed pawn that's going to promote soon. Black has nothing better than to uh, play the repetition with knight f2 check, king h2, knight g4 check, king h1, etc. So for that reason, you can't take the bishop with this rook. You have to take it with the eighth rank rook which might if you you know you might think oh i don't want to i don't want to um undefend my back rank but it's the only winning move you've got to maintain control of the seventh rank here so is just to show you a, a check here does no good first of all i can just retreat if i so need if i so desire in fact that is the best move um, so after takes, look at this move. Give this move a double exclam. What a finale. Rook to g2. Look at this position, guys. Okay. Takes, takes. Oh, my rook's in danger, and if I move it, my knight will be captured. Not if you put him in check. <laughs> This is a beautiful finality because the point is that white must succumb to a royal fork. He only has three legal moves, and no matter which one he plays, a royal fork can be played by black. If he takes the rook, knight takes pawn check, winning the queen. If he tries to evade with a move like king f1, Knight takes pawn, winning the queen. If he plays here, knight to f2, winning the queen. That was glorious. Let's watch it again in slow motion instant replay. Rook to g2 check. 